Well, it's uh, good to be here. Uh, I want to give you a little background on the book, how it came about. Uh, as was pointed out, my PhD is in uh, political science, uh, and I've also uh, written uh, polls, tracking polls, not exit polls. And, uh, and uh, it's real interesting because uh, that's an expertise that a few people have, but uh, apparently any Republican with a high school education may claim that. Uh, so uh, when, you, when we get to the exit poll part, which we will, uh, you know, we'll go into some analysis there. Uh, so I've written an analysis, actually had grants uh, uh, to write polls, uh, worked in uh, Columbus uh, uh, on uh, various initiatives. Uh, also in, in 1994, I was an international election observer with my wife, uh, Suzanne, at the first uh, free and fair election in uh, El Salvador. Uh, and again, I was in the conflictive zone of Sushi Toto, where the Arena Party uh, and the, you know, the uh, death squads met the FMLN. And I co-wrote the uh, report uh, that was submitted to the United Nations, and I edited that report. Now, uh, much of what I was trained to observe in El Salvador, I didn't see. Virtually everything I was trained to observe as signs of non-transparent fraudulent elections, I did unfortunately see as the election protection attorney in the inner city of Columbus, Ohio, in wards 55 and 5, uh, which are predominantly African American wards, particularly Ward 5, uh, where I uh, moved to between um, eight polling locations and nine uh, precincts. And so it's really, uh, and again, uh, just to sort of spell my biases out, uh, I signed a ballot to put Nader on the, uh, on the ballot in Ohio. So uh, in part, uh, I was then accused of being a Republican operative. So uh, I'm not a real fan of the Democratic Party. And, uh, and John Kerry uh, you know, uh, in, uh, was my last choice of, uh, of all the Democrats. But uh, since my candidates didn't get on the ballot, uh, I did reluctantly vote for Mr. Kerry, uh, despite his war position. So that's at least where I'm coming from. I'm not a Democratic Party regular. I'm not affiliated with that party. Uh, but what I am affiliated with is a belief in democracy uh, and free and fair elections, and that's my uh, real passion. Uh, I'm a full professor at Columbus State Community College. I write the curriculum there. Uh, but these days in Ohio, that means I'm the only professor full time, and I have 40 adjuncts in, in cubicles. Uh, I also uh, practice law uh, as well uh, on the side, primarily election law. Uh, death row cases, wrongful uh, convictions, uh, and international law. Uh, but uh, perhaps more importantly, uh, I'm an investigative reporter. I've actually won uh, 11 uh, major editorial awards, including during one four-year uh, period, I was either number one or number two in the state of Ohio from the mainstream uh, Ohio Society of Professional Journalists, which I'm not a member of, but my papers, <laughs> I consider myself a highly trained amateur. Uh, but my paper was a member of. And I do uh, edit the freepress.org and the free press, which is based in Columbus, Ohio. So where I want to start is, of course, to sort of paint the picture of what happened in Ohio prior to Election Day. I want to talk a little about Election Day. And then I want to talk about the post-election. But before I do that, uh, let me just remind people of uh, certain histories. First of all, back in the 1970s, Senator Church of Idaho conducted the Church Committee uh, investigations, the hearing, of which the CIA admitted to rigging hundreds of elections in the third world. And they had a term for it. It was called a, quote, benign operation. Benign because three quarters of a million people weren't killed, as in Indonesia in 1965, as in the coups and that overthrew the government, popular government of Mossadegh in 53 and Arbenz in 54 and uh, later in the 70s in Chile with Allende. So uh, benign because they were just stuffing ballot boxes, paying off politicians, taking over newspapers. So the reality is that the United States has had a long history of rigging elections in the third world. 
What I would suggest, and I borrow here from Kevin Phillips uh, in American Dynasty, right? Kevin Phillips I like to cite because he is, in fact, uh, the architect of the modern Republican Party. Right? He is the one who wrote the emerging, the emerging Republican South. The whole realignment strategy was put forth by Kevin Phillips. He was sort of the strategist, the kind of the Karl Rowe of his day, uh, to uh, President uh, Nixon. So uh, in American Dynasty, which was uh, read uh, for a nonfiction book somewhat last year, it got uh, some uh, distribution, and uh, he talked a lot. But uh, there's a couple things in that book that are, uh, that are interesting. Not only that a Republican would suggest that the Bush family is four generation of war profiteers, uh, whose real power lies in their connections not only to big oil, but to the security industrial complex, uh, covert operations, uh, the CIA. But in, in, if you go to the back of the book, he's got this one little line in there in one of the appendix saying that the Bush family is incapable of running an election without a CIA manual. So what of what I saw in Ohio reminds me of what I was trained for uh, on election day. That, of course, makes me a conspiracy theorist. What I would argue, uh, as an investigative reporter and a political scientist, uh, I traffic in facts. I'm one of those people that, as the Rove White House would say, uh, is stuck in fact-based reality. Uh, <laughs> so with, with that in mind, uh, and again, I think my friends, uh, I like to refer to them as coincidence theorists. You know, the Debolt machines will freeze up in Lucas County and cost carry 7,000 votes. The machines will be missing in Franklin County costing, you know, carry 20,000 votes. Uh, all the, the 78 people will say the vote jumped when I pushed carry, it jumped to Bush in Mahoning County, and they'll say, well, you know, that's just a coincidence. Uh, so when coincidence after coincidence after coincidence after coincidence is piled on top of each other, you have to be a coincidence theory, theorist of the, top, the greatest order in order to believe that there's something uh, uh, at work uh, other than odds and chance, right? Even with the adjusted exit polls, we know that the odds of the president winning, given the exit polls, at best are 1 in 959,000. You know, did he hit the super lotto that day? I don't think so. I think they systematically rigged the election in Ohio and hence stole the election in the United States. More so, I believe the, the exit polls with that 70,000 voter sample was right nationally. I think they stole votes all over this country. I think they took hundreds of thousands of votes uh, out of California. Uh, and I think they did this primarily with proprietary software owned by private partisan corporations that fail any measure of transparency under international law. Uh, on one certain basic element, I mean, since when do you count votes? You know, our right to cast a secret vote. Since when has that been transformed for the right of a private partisan corporation to secretly count our votes and tell us who won? And I think that is the key battle because I believe what happened in Florida was a coup. I believe they stole that election in Florida in 2000, and it was a test run, and they're getting better at it. And I, in my conclusion, I'll spell out how, with the new technology, they have the potential for what I call 